Hi, welcome to another episode of My Wine Smarts. I'm Victoria, your wine coach, and today I'll be your guide through the world of grapes used to make red wines. Now, why is it important for you as a consumer to know something about the grapes wines are made from? Well, many wines today, especially those from North and South America, Australia, and New Zealand, carry the name of the grape on the label. So if you know a little bit about the grape, you'll be able to tell if you might like a wine. Even if you're choosing wines that don't carry the grape on the label, if you can describe what grapes and wines you like and why, you're more likely to find wines that you enjoy. Welcome to the My Wine Smarts Red Wine Primer. My name is Victoria and I will be your guide today as we explore some common red wines. Red wine is quite popular and wine stores and restaurants offer a wide variety of reds from light and fruity ones to ones that are dark, concentrated, and almost chewy in texture. Many red wines are labeled with the grape variety, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir, etc. You might be familiar with these terms, but what do they really mean? What is a Merlot really like? Is it lighter or more full-bodied than a Cabernet Sauvignon? And will it go well with that chicken breast you'd like to try? Of course, to enjoy wine, it is not necessary that you be closely familiar with the features of the grapes they are made from. But knowing a little about the profiles of the most common grapes and the wines made from them will help you be a better consumer. It will help you describe what you like and choose wine that you will enjoy. So in this primer, we will go through the most common grapes from which red wines are made. Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir, these grapes are sometimes called international varietals because by now they grow in many different regions around the world. The wines made from them vary depending on factors such as amount of sunshine, the amount of rain, the way the grapes are picked, and of course the vision of the winemaker. Here we will focus on the common features of these grapes to help you become a better educated wine consumer. Later, you can start exploring the differences in the wines made from Cabernet Sauvignon in France and in California, for example. But for now, let's focus on what they have in common. We'll start with Merlot. Merlot is a misunderstood grape. Some love the fruity, easy-drinking, juicy wines it produces and order it indiscriminately. Others, who identify with Miles in the movie Sideways, think that it is not even worth considering. But this grape is capable of making some great wines. From the well-structured and long-lasting wines from the right bank of Bordeaux to the fruity, rich, and concentrated wines of Washington State. Merlot wines are capable of great stylistic variation, which is why it is important to know a little about the grape and be able to ask the right questions of the people who sell you the wine. Getting to know Merlot will also help you enjoy some excellent wines at prices lower than those for wines of comparable quality made from more famous grapes, such as Cabernet Sauvignon, for example. Never badmouth Merlot, because chances are you have enjoyed it, whether in the wines of Bordeaux, where it is always blended with Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc, or in other wines, including some county. Yes, Merlot is included in some county. The Merlot grape generally produces softer, less tannic wines than Cabernet Sauvignon, wines with more fruit and more roundness, a rounder texture in the mouth. Because of this, it is often added to more austere, less fruity wines to round them out and add the fleshiness that appeals to wine drinkers. The grape also has high sugar levels, which makes Merlot-based wines high in alcohol. Because simple Merlot can be almost too simple and fruity, Merlot wines are often aged in oak. This adds some structure and tannin and makes them more age-worthy and capable of standing next to richer foods. Look for flavors of plums, black cherries, or more often dried cherries, figs, and if the wine is aged in wood, brown spices such as nutmeg and clove, chocolate, and coffee. Who would not love a well-balanced mix of black cherries and chocolate with a hint of nutmeg? To get a sense for the variation Merlot can produce, try a simple, affordable Merlot from California, then a more structured one from Washington, then a highly structured one from saint Emilion in Bordeaux. You will be surprised by the many faces of this grape that has been unjustly maligned for decades. So next time you're out and you see Merlot on the wine list, consider what it can do and give it a chance to surprise you. Now let's talk about Cabernet Sauvignon. Merlot's much more famous friend, which is as hyped up as Merlot is maligned. 
For every person who says that they would never touch Merlot, there's at least one person who always orders cab, as it is fashionably called, regardless of the occasion and the food that might be served. And often that is one and the same person. Many are surprised to learn that Cabernet Sauvignon is often blended with Merlot. This is always the case in the wines of Bordeaux. If you're drinking a Bordeaux from the right bank, you're actually drinking way more Merlot than Cabernet Sauvignon, and sometimes no Cabernet Sauvignon at all. On the left bank of Bordeaux, Cabernet Sauvignon is always blended with Merlot for richness and roundness. So what is Cabernet Sauvignon and what kind of wines does it make? Wines from Cabernet Sauvignon are usually highly structured, big and bold. They make a statement, be it with the high amount of tannin or with the strong aromas of oak. Some can be so tannic as to be almost undrinkable when they're young. Others are well-balanced and have enough aroma, flavor, and richness to balance the high tannin. Remember, tannin is the substance that causes that mouth-drying feeling you get when you take a sip of tea that has been left to steep too long. Cabernet Sauvignon wines have been quite popular, although that popularity has been tamed somewhat by the meteoric rise of Pinot Noir. Many wines from Cabernet Sauvignon are full-bodied, in-your-face, chewy wines that demand all of your attention and can overpower any food they're paired with. But Cabernet Sauvignon is capable of much more, refinement and balance and long, long aging. To get a sense for some of the stylistic variations Cabernet Sauvignon is capable of, try a big Napa Cab and then a Bordeaux from the left bank, which is mostly Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon has aromas of dark fruits, blackberry and blackcurrant, cassis, and often, especially in California, a hint of mint and eucalyptus. It is often oak-aged, and that imparts smoky, toasty aromas of tobacco, cedar, cigar box, and vanilla. Cabernet Sauvignon can be so powerful and big that it's best enjoyed on its own or with a big steak, but some of the more balanced and refined Cabernet Sauvignons pair well with richer dishes, usually meat ones. A red grape that has been wildly popular in the last decade or so, partly due to miles and sideways, is Pinot Noir, the problem child of many winemakers and wine growers. As with Cabernet Sauvignon, fame has not always been good for Pinot Noir. It has led to misunderstanding of what the grape is and what it can do. Those who love Pinot Noir are often attracted to a particular style, the luscious, fruit-driven, dark Pinot Noirs of Oregon and California, or the light-colored, more earthy, more acidic wines of Burgundy. Either way, once someone becomes attached to Pinot Noir, it is difficult to get them to act rationally. If you have a friend who is spending every paycheck on cases of Oregon Pinot Noir or is always on the lookout for the next release of Red Burgundy, you know what I'm talking about. Even though it might seem like Pinot Noir is native to Oregon, Oregon's Willamette Valley, where many of its more modern versions come from, it's actually native to France, where it has been grown on the golden slopes of Burgundy for centuries. As early as the Middle Ages, the monks made excellent Pinot Noir wines that were highly priced among the church dignitaries and kings. Today, Red Burgundy, which is always Pinot Noir, attracts a similarly well-off audience, as most of it is pricey. This coupled with the fact that most Burgundy producers have minuscule lots and produce very limited quantities has fueled the Burgundy craze. Good Burgundy is an excellent wine, sophisticated, complex, seductive, multi-layered. It's truly a shame that we can't enjoy it more often. But there's much great Pinot Noir in other parts of the world, albeit of a very different style. Today, great Pinot Noir comes from Oregon, California, especially the more northern parts, New Zealand, and even Germany. Like Merlot, Pinot Noir is capable of great stylistic variety, so ordering a Pinot Noir is not easy. Pinot Noir from Burgundy tends to be lighter on the palate, less fruity, more earthy, and with higher acidity, one of the main reasons that they pair so well with food. Oregon and California Pinot Noirs tend to be fruitier, darker, and more concentrated, and higher in alcohol, too. And while red burgundy usually has aromas of strawberry, raspberry, and cherry, Pinot Noir from warmer climates, including Oregon and California, has aromas of strawberry jam, plum, or bing cherry. But fruity aroma aromas are not all there is to Pinot Noir. The better wines also have earthiness, mushroom, leather, dry leaf uh, aromas and flavors. And the combination of these aromas is seductive and lovers of Pinot Noir find it difficult to resist this seduction. 
The mouthfeel tends to be silky and smooth, which adds to the seductive qualities. So whether you're joining your Pinot Noir loving friend or exploring these great wines in more rational company, sit back and get ready to be seduced. So in this episode, we discuss three common grapes used to make red wines and the general features of the wines made from them. We talked about what these wines smell and taste like, and we also talked about what they pair well with. We offered some suggestions for you to try so you can get to know these wines better. Thanks for joining us for this episode of My Wine Smarts. Keep tasting wine and keep learning about it.